Hello, I'm Lonnie. I'm Amberlicious. We're on Title Nerd Network. This is, uh, my God, it, it, it's done. It, it's over with. It's over, Anakin. This is the last one. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> this is the final Conjuring movie as of right now. Yeah. Um, hell, you never know. They might end up releasing another sure. one before the end of the year. <laughs> I know. Um, you know. I, don't I know. think that's pretty wrapped up. I think this, uh, unless they do an, another Annabelle movie, but I don't see them doing that either. I don't know. You think the Warrens are done? I think the Warrens may be done. Um, remember how we talked about how... The spinoffs. The spin, uh, yeah, the different backstories. That could be a thing. I could see that being a thing. But I think the Warrens are done after this film. This um, film wasn't scary. It, it, here's the thing. The way this yeah. film started, the first ten minutes of the film, was scary as shit. Mm-hmm. But then the movie turns into out. more of a mystery kind of uh, investigation yeah. thriller with some horror thrown in. Paranormal, um, yeah, would be more accurate. It it turned into more of a paranormal mystery. Like, what's going on here? Yeah, it, this... It, it, this one felt more like an episode of the X Files. Yeah, as I opposed, could see that. yeah, but the the uh, the whole Ed and Lorraine Warren thing. Like, they've done really good in those roles. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I've actually kind of become attached to them. Um, you know, oh, it doesn't... Yeah, they've, they've built up their character so much through the franchise. It doesn't you hurt. You can't help but just absolutely love them and their connection to each other and all that. Well, it doesn't hurt that Ed is played by the dude who played Night Owl on Watchmen, you know. Mm -hmm. He's a great... Uh, Patrick... I just had the name because I just looked at it. <sighs> I'll pull it up. Yeah. He also played in the Insidious franchise. Um, he was in the first two. Patrick Wilson. Yes. Um, and he, he's played in so much. He's such a great actor. I'm, I'm like kind of looking to see if they have any other... Any other... Uh, Big roles that he did. Yeah. Um, he's known for The Phantom of the Opera from 2004. Yes. I, I saw hmm. that when that was on there and I was like, I did not know that because I didn't see that movie. But. Insidious, Watchmen, The Conjuring movies, mm -hmm. a movie called Midway from 2019, In the Tall Grass, The Assistant, the other two. He played a uh, Whoa, he played King Orm in Aquaman. Okay. I haven't watched Aquaman, so... Nightmare Cinema. Uh, another Insidious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Hollow Point. He played the President in uh, Batman vs. Superman. Huh. Fargo. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, that... But anyway, yeah. He, he has a, an extensive... And he's one, he's he one of those... He has a variety, too. Who's yeah. the guy? Um, Gary Gary Oldman is mm -hmm. his name. Who has been in literally everything, but hardly anybody knows his name. Or Most people don't know that the characters he played were him. <laughs> yeah, because he's one he's, of those type things. Yeah, it was like, uh, you know, like Billy Bob Thornton. You know, he is in a lot of films where his appearance has changed. Tim Curry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, holy crap. Like, this dude has been in a lot. Um, but, yeah, basically, you have this whole thing where they perform an exorcism. The, uh, the demon goes from this eight-year-old boy into this guy and like the guy offers the demon his body and, he does yeah um it goes into him but all of their typical tricks and stuff aren't working on this demon 
And then come to find out it's because it's due to a curse. The demon has been summoned. And mm-hmm. so it kind of, you know, lays dormant until the woman brings it forth. Right. And then it takes over the host body again, that kind of thing. And, you know, it, it's really the struggle of them trying to figure out where the altar is and who's doing this. And the connections. <laughs> yeah. And yada, yada, yada. Trying to figure everything out. They eventually figure everything out at the very end. <laughs> like, this is a movie. I don't really want to spoil it yet. Um, yeah. This is the newest one. I'll give everybody yeah. without without completely spoiling the end. Uh, I want to like give our review because mm-hmm. it's eh, you know it's a little early. Yeah, I mean, even though this is going to be airing in October, that's true. Like, but still, I'm just like you know, if y'all want to see a new horror movie, go see this one because th- it was this, decent. Yeah, I, it wasn't the best movies of this franchise. Yeah, in my opinion, it was probably Bye. one of the least scary, but it was it very was. entertaining. It was not as scary, but it was entertaining, and like I said, I think this wraps it up for Ed and Lorraine. Because I they, uh... Know. Maybe. They about killed each other, literally. <laughs> I'll just say that. They yeah. They did it. I just think this was, you know, a lot. You know, he suffered a heart attack at the beginning. You know, and they had to put a stint in. I mean, you know. Yeah, that was... Uh, I'm I'm really curious if that really happened in real life. Or was it done just for dramatic purposes? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I'm sure there's an article worth somewhere. Worth looking into, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm actually... Now that we're done with these movies... And we're completely caught up... I'm actually thinking about doing a little bit of research. Maybe get a book or something... You know, and kind of read into some of their stuff. I'd be cool with that. That'd be that awesome. might be something we could do on Amazon in the next few days. Mm-hmm. Get a book and just kind of pass it back and forth. Because there, uh, there, there is their their story. I was fascinated with it, with them even before watching these movies. Mm-hmm. I knew who they were, and uh, it was like I don't know for some reason I I'd never I didn't put two and two together the first one or two movies I saw in this series that it was them because uh, I had just, I don't know, I guess over time, because I first heard about them when I was like 11 or 12 years old. I found a book about them in like the local, like the elementary school library. You know, it was like one of those little, it was like a little 40 page book, you know, ghost, blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't about them they but were just like mentioned. They were they had a substantial part in there about some of the cases they had done. Oh, you know, okay. these are popular, you know, paranormal investigators and da 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 da. You know, they I think Neat. when the book was published they were still very active. Probably. Yeah. You know, probably late eighties or something. It had like the vibe of one of those like time life books or something. Oh, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Which I have a couple of them over there, I think, about UFOs. But um but yeah, th- th- this turned out to be a really good movie. Like I said, I don't want to spoil too much of it, but uh, you know, it-, it does deal heavily with the occult and mm-hmm. uh, the the flashbacks and stuff that Lorraine had and some of the visions that she saw. And that stuff was messed up. That was very high. Like yeah, uh, we like... we've seen her go under some yeah and act out a little bit, but we saw her full out engulfed in this movie. They're very in depth. Yeah. He's sleepy. Ah, uh, he, he smells our incense burning, yeah, I'm he's sure. Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, he probably don't like it. <laughs> His zero's up in the cat tree off camera. <laughs> but um But yeah, it, it was a fantastic movie. What do you give it? Uh, hmm. I I'm gonna give it a nine. Okay. I don't I just don't feel like it. It was it was a really good movie. It was not the shit show everyone said it was. Oh yeah, this movie did Cause... get butchered in the critics and stuff. Well, even people that had seen it. Yeah. Uh, you know. I almost feel my like... mom said it wasn't even that great. Well, I feel you know? like a lot of people were expecting hardcore scary. Like the other ones, and, and it wasn't. And while it started out that way, I think that got everybody's hopes up that first ten minutes. 
And then when it didn't go in that direction, they it were like, upset oh. a lot of people. But I thought it was still it was a very still a good story, though. Inter- That's why I'm giving yeah. it a nine. It's like it wasn't the scary that we're used to, and that. But I'm only gonna knock a point off for that. It was still a good story. But I, I it wouldn't. was still interesting. I was wanting to see what happened. I wanted yeah. to see how it was all resolved. You know, it it also did have a very solid twist at the end. Mm-hmm. It did. When they reveal the whole deal behind everything. Mm-hmm. So that that was worth it. That was well worth it. And you kind of figure it out right about the same time everybody else does. Yeah. Even though they don't explicitly say it. You're just like, wait a minute. Yeah. And um, I, I'll give this one a nine as well. I, I totally agree with you there. But I will say that despite the fact that this wasn't a typical horror scare fest like the other ones are Mm -hmm. um you know didn't have a lot of jump scare stuff like that there were some scary parts i'll say the exorcism that opens the movie in my opinion is the best exorcism scene in this whole series yeah easily and based on the simple fact that nothing was working and you got to see the full-fledged like Wow, what would you call it? Well, the demon was you know? unchained yeah, and was it. able to hurt people. Yeah. And I mean, you got to see him in action. You got to see it in action. The yeah, demon. The, the demon you calls. Act, you don't. Because, you know, they stop it before it gets too rowdy. Yeah. Because, you know, it turned out to be a curse. They couldn't stop it. It was installed, and it was, it was amazing. It really was. So that that boy's body contorted, yeah, into uh, I and don't know what. The the whole thing is the guy who urged the demon to enter his body to get rid of it, out of the eight year old boy. Mm-hmm. Um, he ends up in the first probably fifteen twenty minutes of the movie, killing somebody, and then the entire movie is them trying to prove him innocent by way of demonic possession. Yep. That's the whole thing of the movie, mm-hmm. but it is, it's fantastic. It really is. I it was really, really close to giving it a 10, but it just, it wasn't quite on par with like The Conjuring 2 or something like that. Yeah. And so. Uh, it was a little off their beaten path, but I also feel like that's a good final step. Tell me this, like between the Conjuring movies mm-hmm. and the Annabelle movies, let's just forget the nun exists, but yeah. between the two s- kind of side-by-side series that run parallel together, which one did you enjoy more? E- <laughs> I don't know. They're both really good. I, Despite me being scared of dolls, Annabelle was really good. We gave it higher ratings. I think... Really. But here's the thing. I'll probably never watch uh, that sec- Annabelle creation. I'll probably never watch it again. It was really <laughs> fucking scary. <laughs> we I had think... to watch something nice. We had to watch regular show before bed that night. <laughs> I think that the Annabelle movies are a little more scary, but I think the Conjuring movies are a little more entertaining. As far That's as like fair. characters and stuff. Because they focus yeah, heavily on the Yeah, character development shit, yeah. Yep. You're right. I would totally agree with that. All right. Well, solid nines across the board on The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, if you're watching this now, we're recording this like the last week that it's available on HBO Max. Mm -hmm. By the time this releases to everyone in October, uh, hopefully this will be available on Blu-ray and all that. And everybody, you know, can, if people still buy physical media. Right. In the future. Um, Next few months. Yeah. But yeah, it's going to be available on Vudu and Amazon and all those places. So yeah, check it out. You never know. It might even... I'm pretty sure it'll be back on HBO Max once it releases on DVD well, I think and all that. once it finally releases, it'll be back on there. Yeah. So anyway, we'll see y'all next time. We're not done yet. We're still going to record a few more uh, horror movie reviews for our October series. 
And we've already gotten eight in the books, which is more than we've done any other year. Right. <laughs> we actually have a good, solid Halloween project this year, which is going to be it. freaking awesome. So we're done. Holy crap. But we're going to do some other ones, not quite related to The Conjuring. I, I really want to watch Fire in the Sky. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of want to do that, uh, the haunting movie mm -hmm. the, that deals with the Warrens. And, you know, maybe throw a couple more in there. I'll, you know, I'll have you pick a couple if you want to watch. Maybe some old B, 80s movie horror material maybe. or something. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Right. But anyway, we'll see everybody next time. I'm Lonnie. I'm Amberlicious. We're in Title Nerd Network. This has been another Halloween 2021 horror movie review.